Hey guys, welcome back to another All Things Nerd podcast. I was going to say LGR for a minute. <laughs> Taking it back old school. Taking it back old I school. Like if it. anybody followed us from back in the uh, back in the olden days, uh, we had a podcast that was called Legit Game Reviewers, uh, but now we're All Things Nerd. So Yeah, but we're a lot cooler now. So We are. Are we though? Nah, not really. I'm not. not. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. All right, so we're back with another podcast. Um, this was in, when was this? This was a couple days ago. Uh, so Destiny, or I should say Bungie, uh, finally separated from Activision. So Activision, if you guys did not know, is the publisher for, or was the publisher for Destiny. And they worked alongside with Bungie. And so a couple days ago, uh, they actually separated after a 10-year contract with Activision uh, with their games. And so uh, after the separation, Bungie finally uh, 100% owns destiny themselves uh the, as the company so activision has no part in it um one big concern i did have with this though was uh i was thinking of the pc users because pc the game is on the blizzard launcher and so I, my concern was how are they going to handle that game is it still going to be on blizzard because blizzard i didn't know it that's actually a um it's an activision owned uh company or uh launcher i guess so Activision runs the Blizzard client. So my concern was, are they going to move that over to a, another launcher or are they going to keep it on Blizzard? And I guess they're actually keeping it on there. Yeah, um, they were saying they were going to keep it on the Battle.net launcher. So that's good. Yeah, so I was concerned about that as PC users because uh, I was actually talking to Alfredo, a um, friend, and we were talking, we were talking about that uh, yesterday. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, well, if they're moving from Blizzard... Which I didn't know Activision owned it until until today when I read the article. Um, I didn't know that, so I was kind of thinking, okay, well, if the, it's gonna, I feel like it's gonna be a huge hassle if they're trying to move their game over to a different launcher on PC, because if that was the case, would they even continue with the PC game, or would they try to maybe discontinue it and just work on consoles? Because I feel yeah, like that would have been sure. just the easier option, but I'm apparently, sure. they're, apparently they're not. Apparently, they're just sticking with I, it. I, I think it's a smart plan of them to keep it on the Battle.net launcher. You know, you've done all this work well, <clears throat> with both games over the years, and uh, you know Blizzard and Activision have a good connection, obviously. You know, they worked on Destiny together, but I think it's really smart of them to keep it there because they would lose a lot of people <clears throat> if they switched over to a new client. Everybody would have well, to redownload. Can you imagine? Do something different. It would Can you bad. imagine <laughs> if they moved Steam over to, or uh, Destiny over to Steam? <laughs> That would be crazy. It would be awful. Like I mean, Steam would be is awful. already Steam is already like a pretty like awful client as it is. I mean, yeah. I we deal with it because that's the only thing out there for mm -hmm. the majority of PC games. Like it's not like they would be able to end Steam anytime soon. Yeah. But as for like a launcher, if we had to be forced to use it through Steam, that would just be awful. <laughs> itself. Well, and I think people forget that the Steam client isn't supposed to be this wonderful game client you know it's just supposed no. to be a marketplace to buy games that's oh, really yeah. what yeah. valve has gotten out of the steam client and you can tell that it's not really not gamer friendly <clears throat> when it comes to trying to like stream and do different things because the client's crap <laughs> at oh, the end of the day we all but we both is, know yeah. that you know <laughs> but going back to this uh deal that you know activision's going away from bungie i think it's a really smart move on bungie's part getting away from Activision and far away from them as possible you can kind of see that like I don't know if you've been reading up uh, a lot of the high people from Blizzard have been quitting and leaving the oh, company really? and I, I think that's one of the dudes because it has to do with Activision and the way they've ruined the company I mean, when you get with the company that all they care about is money you know which don't mm. get me wrong mostly every company cares about money right they want to make money everybody wants to make money but when your full focus is just making money doing microtransactions making the game as crap as possible don't really care don't really keeping it up then you're gonna have problems and that's a big thing i think that's happened with oh, yeah. destiny 2 i know? agree and i the, mean i would say the way they need to fix it <laughs> i would say I, I probably haven't really noticed except for like the last five years maybe maybe the whole gaming industry has been this way for a long time but mm -hmm. i would say as for myself um especially for for like so for multiplayer games i didn't get into it into you know or becoming a big gamer until about 10 years ago 
which mm. was when Black Ops One first came out. And that's when I got my. You were way behind, my friend. Yeah, so I'm like way, you know, way behind in online gaming or just gaming in general, pretty much, um, or I should say, daily or consistent gaming. Yeah. Um, I was I never delved into it, but as for especially in the last five years, I've noticed that that is that's the big problem with the gaming industry. This now is we've seen a and this this is just a bigger problem than just activision handling you know uh the way that they handle business and how uh-huh. businesses care about money it's bigger than just activision you know it, it goes over a whole industry of we we've seen a lot of people who made fun of esports especially like you know espn commentators people on you know uh talk show hosts people that are just bashing gaming in general and now we're actually seeing those people coming into these jobs because they see that that's the way to go, how the, the world's moving forward, but they see that there's a lot of money into it. Yeah, And that's the thing is, so now we're getting those people, a lot of people who, um, you know, handle these uh, these companies or developers and these games in a way that now it's just a monopoly, you know? So now that yeah. the more they own, the more money they're going to get. And if we actually switch over to um, uh, Google here for a minute, we just scroll through this article, um, we can actually see, I'm trying to see where it's at. I guess this is actually not professional. <laughs> I'm trying to see. Uh, so th- there's a lot of microtransactions though in this game with the uh, with the Eververse, which I'm assuming, I haven't really delved into Destiny 2 a-, a lot, so bear with me people. But yeah, the Eververse I'm assuming is a online uh, store within Destiny 2. And there was a lot of microtransactions within the game. And so, that's kind of the other thing is a lot of they don't understand gamers that's the problem is we uh-huh. got a lot of these companies that handle these games big big companies such as activision yeah. that are telling these these developers how to develop their own game and when to come out with content when they want to because they're the publisher and that's not that's not how it works with gamers <laughs> you no. know like we can't just come out with a game and play a game with limited content and be content we're always wanting there to be more, whether that's weekly you gotta or monthly give or, or what the community wants. Oh and yeah. And a lot of companies don't do yeah. that. They're just out to do microtransactions. They're For out sure. to make money. They don't care about you. They come out with a game that everybody wants to kind of play. And they're like, Oh, okay, this is cool. They don't support it. You mm-hmm. know, they don't really put hard into it. And I, I'm actually really excited for Bungie to step away from Activision because we all know and love Bungie from the original Halo. That is, you know, everybody's favorites. Mm hmm. And, um, uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be a good move for them. So going oh, forward, yeah. especially, I, I think it's going to be a good thing because of the, and it kind of comes back to, like I said, with the whole company handling Activision handling, uh, the way that, uh, Bungie does things. And that's even coming Definitely. out with content. Uh, destiny two was a flop. <laughs> like a lot of people say destiny two fixed a lot of the problems in destiny one. I mean, I, like I said, I, I haven't delved too far into it. But the things that I've heard is Forsaken, which is the last, um, I think it's either the last or one of the, the last few uh, DLC or content that came out for Destiny 2. Mm-hmm. I've heard a lot of good things about it, but that's the only good thing I've heard about Destiny 2. And just like Destiny 1, they hit the first, year, the one year mark with their game to finally have something decent. And yeah. I'm pretty sure that's on Activision this time around. I'm pretty sure it's on Activision. Uh, like I said, forcing them to either... I guess there was content, like Alfredo was telling me. He said that there was apparently content they were supposed to come out with that was dropped, and that was essentially because of Activision being like, no, we're not doing that. And they're coming out with like something else because it wasn't part of their big picture plan. So, <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, okay, well, so that's just a, you know, that's just a horrible thing for gamers too. Like gamers don't want that. They do, They want all the content that they can get. And when you're monitoring, not only what kind of content is coming out, but when the content is coming out, that's just already like a ball buster for gamers. So yeah. So yeah, that was one of the big things. But I, I'm, I'm certain that with this whole uh, switch over from Activision to Bungie themselves, they'll probably do good by it. Yeah. Being said, I, it's just I, I would like to see Bungie get back to Halo, even though it probably won't happen because three, four, three studios is taking it over, and yeah, they haven't really done that great of job. But I don't know. I'm excited to see what Bungie does on their own, away from Activision, and see what oh, else yeah. they can come up with because they're obviously they're really, you know, 
minds when it comes to games. Like, look at the Halo series, the original Halo series. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I'm excited to see what Bungie does. So, I think it'll be good. Yeah. For sure. I, th- I think it's a good Switch. I mean, it's definitely... Now that I've seen that this is on the forefront and hearing mm-hmm. about the whole Switch, I'm confident that that's the whole reason why Destiny has been pretty trash since the beginning. Definitely. Is because Definitely. of this, uh, because of Activision, uh, like I said, being a ball buster <laughs> when it comes to actual content that's even coming out. So, hmm. which is kind of crazy. I, I, when I first saw the, uh, the 10 year contract, I was like, wait, is that actually Destiny? <laughs> I was like, 10 years already? What? It's only been, um, well, I get like the whole developing portion, but I was thinking the game came out, but it's actually just with Bungie. I just wanted to mention this. Um, it's exciting to see that Destiny, they already raised over $100 million in funding from NetEase to work on non-Destiny projects. So D- Bungie's mm-hmm. definitely going to be back in the gaming development business on uh, doing stuff on their own. So like I said before, yeah. with Halo Mines, I wonder what they're going to create next. It could be the next big space game again. You know, we haven't Hopefully, really had a yeah. big, nice space sci-fi game in a while, oh, yeah. um, like Halo. So, so this is the other we'll thing see. I was going to ask you before. So I was, I was talking to Alfredo, and so he, like I said, a big fan of uh, Destiny. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, he was telling me there was plans for four games of Destiny. And so for you wow. as a player of, uh, you know, like World of Warcraft, you know, somebody who's played like an MMO or a few of them over the years. Uh-huh. um What's your thought on that of like four games? Four games? Yeah. That's a lot. So like keep I mean, it, so keeping in mind that I would say the majority of people who play Destiny are console players. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say you have to keep in mind that it's not like PC where you can come out with one client and just do graphical updates through that one client and then have just dumping in DLC to it. So I do mm-hmm. get that for consoles because of graphical updates, they have to come out with separate games. But what's your thought on that? Do you think people like gamers would enjoy just one CD, one game to buy, and then over, let's say, the course of 10 years, they just dump in content into that one game? Or do you think it would make sense to have, like, Destiny 1, 2, 3, and 4? DLC, like, content they would put in? Or is this just more... No, so, like, so like you, know how free content. Came, you know how Destiny 2 came out? And it was... Okay. They had, like, a whole graphical update with it. It's a whole separate game. So you can't play with Destiny 1 users. You know, it's only Destiny 2. Destiny 1 can't play with Destiny 2 people. It's separate discs. So I as see. gamers, they have to buy the new game if they want to play Destiny 3, let's say. And then there's DLC poured out for that game. Like, what do you think? Because that's what I, that's what he was telling me was, I don't know if they're continuing with that uh, well, formula. But apparently there was real, a few games. What do you think? To be real, we've... We see movies, right? Sequels are never that great compared to the original. Yeah. The originals. And I think it's a scale is the same for games. Um, but I think it is different in games as well. Because, yeah. you know, obviously movies are way different from creating video games. But a lot of movies nowadays do CGI and all that stuff. But um, with games, I think that you can expand a lot more than you could a movie. Because you can for keep sure. adding DLC. It's not like you can go buy a DLC for a movie. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> that yeah. doesn't work. But um, I'm not 100% sure, to be real with you. I, yeah. I've i never really... I mean, I've played MMOs over the years. Like World mm-hmm. of Warcraft, I got really into and other stuff. But my experience with MMOs have been good. As long as they keep the game entertaining and fresh and pour out new content, I think they'll be just fine, personally. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, do, do you think it would be okay if they released different increments of like games, like I said, a Destiny, you know, three, four, five, and then make DLC for those? Because like I said, gamers are gonna have to be forced to buy the new game to even play yeah. the new content. Versus, I think so. like I said, let's say PC, they just have just the one client, and then you dump DLC into it. They don't have to buy a whole new game to play the yeah. DLC and pay extra for the DLC. Versus, well, here's the thing. I think that question yeah. they would have to ask, do they just want to make Destiny exclusive to just PC then? Because it's kind of hard to do that and support well, that, a game saying, on consoles. The majority know? of players, I, I I believe, are on console. Consoles uh, are limited. Yeah, and that's why I was saying that that's why it does make sense. But do you think people would be content with just the one game on, on console, like one game, and then mm-hmm. come out with content like over 10 years? Or do you think the games are necessary 
for the graphical improvements and whatnot. Like, do you think that is a big reason why people would probably pay for the next game and why it's actually important for them to come out with new games? I think that I think it's important both ways. I think you mm-hmm. can look at it one way where you can put out one game and keep adding on to it. And I think people would be happy because then they don't have mm-hmm. to go buy something new. But I think over time, sure. people get this thing where it gets old for some reason. I think people I like you. collecting new stuff and they like collecting yeah. these new games. It and gets they people look forward excited. to new games. Kind of exactly. So I think mm-hmm. there's certain, you have your certain crowd of people who want your new games, who want you know destiny 4 destiny 5 destiny 6 and then you have some people who are like oh just stick with destiny 3 and keep adding on to it but yeah, for sure. I, and i think it can go both ways because like myself i i mean look at me i've been playing league of legends for the past eight years straight i haven't played any other video game really and yeah. i think mobas have been a big part of that okay because mobas you'll have a different experience every single time yeah so personally for me i it doesn't bother me at all but i don't really know how like other people would feel about the whole issue yeah um, i just know for me personally i don't care if it's one game as long as they keep adding fun and neat stuff to it i yeah. don't care about having a brand new game and i need to collect the steel case and all these other collector's editions so mm-hmm. it doesn't bother me but i got you i yeah. think that yeah i think it could be good and i think it also be bad it just depends on the kind of character or person you are so. For sure, yeah, because I think the one game, it's actually the only game I could think <clears throat> of off of this topic that has been able to do this and the game still, it's still a ongoing game, is uh, Warframe. Yeah, no, I, mm. he's uh, he's one of the few people I've known who actually stayed on with the game whenever they came out with the new content. And mm-hmm. I actually just searched you up right now. So Warframe was released uh, March 25th, 2013. Oh. And so the PS4 was released November that same year. Uh, so Warframe was one of the first games that came out on PS4 as well, and it was a free to play. Um, it's the only game I could think of from 2013 up until now that's still releasing content, and it's just the one basic game where they just dump content into it. So yes. I guess that's kind of where I was going with like, do you think that would be a great idea? Because I mean, I think they can do graphical uh, updates, you know, especially with it being a digital game. I, I uh-huh. honestly, Warframe I believe is only a digital game. Um, so Destiny essentially would have to go that same route, but I'm assuming because people either people want discs or you know they got those certain uh, bonuses like when you go to GameStop or something and they got those yeah. different uh, you know they got the what do you call it the um, they got the different Poster editions and- <laughs> yeah the different editions and whatnot so yeah, I'm kind of assuming that that's stuff. kind of part of the whole deal with buying the the new disc. And mm-hmm. making content for the next game. So I just don't want to see like an early release game that they've been doing this yeah. trend over these past few years. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's driving me insane when people mm. have been doing this early release crap and then you and then oh, they yeah. never finish mm. it. It's just it's just a it's a money pit. That's all yeah. it is. Yeah. You know? EA Look never at does Daisy. That. Daisy is a perfect example. <laughs> it just got out of beta last year. Mm-hmm. So and it's been not working on for years yeah. and yeah. years. Mm. Yeah, so. for sure. That's just one but, thing uh, I do not want to see, especially. Oh, yeah, I agree. That microtransactions, uh, that has ruined the gaming industry. Yeah, I mean, all. see, that's that's like a big thing. Like, online gaming has essentially made gaming itself better because you can always update your crap game on the fly, especially if there's issues day one. Because back in the day, back in the day, I remember games were twenty nine ninety nine on PS uh, PS two, and you got everything with it, and everything came with it. You know, like that's uh, right. Was it Battlefront two? Was mm-hmm. great example. One of the best games ever. You, came with a bunch everything. of maps. Yeah, bunch of maps, bunch of stuff that came with it. DLC was separate, which I think was. I remember uh, what was it? Halo. Remember second disc for your second for your, uh, the other maps like the DLC. It'd have a second disc. mm Hmm. And so I can't remember if you, um, do you remember if you had to like install that on the original Xbox or did you just have to pop in the second disc and then play off of that? Do you remember? I, man, I would have to go back. It's been a lot uh, of I'm years. Trying to remember, but I don't remember that, having a second disc for Halo though. though. Yeah. So hmm. like I remember PS1 did the same thing um, where if it was a big game like Driver, I have Driver 2 and it's two separate games for that one game because it's, well, it's such a big game. 
I remember like Final Fantasy. That was a big one where you had like Several six discs. CDs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, six discs. Yeah. And you'd all, you know, like especially like Final Fantasy IX, which is my favorite Final Fantasy in the series. Mm-hmm. There was like, I think there was like six discs. It was ridiculous that you had to oh, play it was through. Crazy. And it was I, I just thought though. that was cool, though. You know. Oh yeah. You got the complete was... game. You didn't have to go buy more DLC or anything. And that was the great thing, yeah. But like online gaming, or online co- compatibility with gaming, I should say, has essentially saved gaming itself because as a company if, if your game was crap day one and it just flopped it flopped and yeah. you lost all your money and most likely people were fired <laughs> like it was a bigger problem than just a crap game mm-hmm. now it's like okay well there were some graphical errors sorry guys it'll be up in five hours you know a day or like one hour and then yeah. their game was fixed and you can fix specific problems too that's like the nice thing the other problem is now you have a safety net on okay well we're trying to come out with this game before this other this other game comes out mm-hmm. uh perfect example was call of duty ghosts and battlefield 4 uh they both were competing to come out early because they wanted to get fans um over the other you know fans and so uh both games came out early they both rushed to their games both games were crap but battlefield 4 was the better of the crap games <laughs> it was the better <laughs> crap out of the crap and so yeah. I remember that happened. And so a lot of Call of Duty fans actually moved over to Battlefield 4 because Ghost was such a trash game. And hmm. so that's kind of the other thing is EA, too often do they use that safety net of, all right, we're going to release our game early because we can fix it later. And that's Talking the about Battlefield 4, that was one of the worst releases ever. Oh, yeah. Their servers I, I and stuff, the, uh, it's really bad problems. I played the beta and really it was bad. perfect. And then the game came out and I was like, what is this trash? With rubber, yeah. rubber banding, your bullets, would they would shoot and then they would come back into your gun basically. Mm-hmm. And then you die out of nowhere. <laughs> like, Yeah, it was pretty yeah. bad. It was pretty awful, but pretty bad. microtransactions though has definitely been the, uh, has been the demon of, uh, of gaming. Definitely. They've been using sure. it way, uh, way too much in a lot of games. I just wanted to mention one last thing, if you don't mm-hmm. mind. Is um, I think we're yeah we're gonna wrap this up anyways. Is I wanted to mention with going back to the whole early release safety net is if you come out of the game like let's say Half Life Three that everybody's been anticipating for twenty <clears> plus <throat> years, you know, or whatever, everybody's gonna buy it because it's Half Life Three. Oh my gosh, Valve actually released a third title. But they could just literally say it's early release, release like one half finished level. Yeah. And then that's just the thing I don't <laughs> like is they could be yeah. like, oh, well, we told you it was early release. That's what I don't like about these companies doing that. Yeah. Is sure. you're going to come out with something that people want. And of course, yeah. they're going to buy it. And then you're just going to tell them, oh, well, it's early release. You should have known before you bought it. Yeah. And now I, it's just the such, player's fault. It's not there. Yeah. Such twisted thinking. And mm-hmm. I hate it. You know, even though, yes. It is on the That's player because they did buy it, the, correct? Yeah. But it's like you're basically it's like putting out a piece of candy and for like a kid, yeah. you know, and of course the kid's going to want the candy or, or whatever and you know they're going to want to take it. It's kind of like us as gamers where we're going yeah. to buy it. They know we're going to buy it because it's something we really want. And then they're just like, oh, well, we told you you shouldn't, you know? Yeah. So I just I don't like this whole early release thing. I, I think it's crap. Yeah, so, for personally. sure. I don't like this whole safety net. I That's think actually it's a great. Uh, it's actually a great podcast idea to find the crappiest of crap games that were like the sketchiest of sketch <laughs> that just came out with just came out with their games. We should and then turn it on the uh, consumers and screw them over. It's yeah, actually a good podcast idea. Actually, you want to come <laughs> out with the podcast where we just do like one half sentence line and then we'll release it and sell it, and then people will be like, "Oh, well, we it's told actually, you just one half sentence line." That's actually so. the greatest idea you ever had. <laughs> it's be the same thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. I I don't like I don't like the game market right now. Yeah, it's no, good. it's definitely a uh, like I said, it's a it's a monopoly. A lot of people have seen that it's people you know, need they, to learn from Project they can Red. Make it, the, yeah, they can make a dollar from it. So the company that makes The Witcher, they're oh, a yeah. good example of what Great a gaming company. company should be. Great company, so. yeah. So for but, sure. Oh, dude, I have the burps this whole night. I hate this. <laughs> But, uh, all right, guys. Well, thank you for listening. Uh, appreciate you guys checking us out. Yeah. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy these podcasts. We're going to try to do them a little more often than before. Um, kind of like these, maybe like 10 minute podcasts, something pretty short, but, uh, we do look forward to bringing you guys the news on gaming content and, um, 
Hopefully says you guys 10 see. minutes, goes on 25. Yeah. Wait, is it 25? Really? Yeah, 25 Oh, minutes. is it? Dang. Okay. Well, 20, 10 to 25, 30-minute podcast, whatever. <laughs> but anyways, uh, we covered a lot on here. Uh, pretty like interesting con- content. Um, you know, um, A lot of these I've just heard of just in the last day. So I'm even yeah. learning things when we do these. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed them. Um, I certainly did. So definitely look out for these podcasts in the future. We'll be doing them more often. And we'll be uploading them to our Facebook page and our YouTube. Um, so the only problem is you can't embed YouTube videos into Facebook to play them. Um, so those views don't count onto YouTube. So we'd actually appreciate it if you guys would not only like and follow our Facebook, but do the same thing and sub um, to our YouTube channel. That way you can yes. watch the videos there. Um, and that'll help us out as well. So uh, if you like this one, please give it a like um and share off of youtube even on this facebook page as well and uh we hope to see you guys soon and we look forward to growing with you guys in this year 2019 um so do you have anything to say nathan no um i hope you guys give us some feedback you know we want to hear from what you guys have to say for sure i appreciate it thanks you guys watching and listening if you can't watch it maybe you're on your way to work something in the car but appreciate it (laughs) thanks for watching and we'll see you guys later take care yep See you guys.